this is Arun Sharma from Microsoft. Welcome you all to this uh, online page webinar presentation. And today we'll be covering the first topic of this webinar series, that is how to prepare bid winning request for proposals. And our focus will be on post tension box order bridges, which is which are uh, mostly design built projects. So this is what we'll be covering today. First, I'll be walking you through the usual workflow of uh, for requests for proposals, and then what is the role of uh, design engineers in that, and how they can contribute. And then we'll be talking about how uh, and why my receivable is needed. So we'll be investigating the reasons and uh, finding out how my receivable can help you in preparing an efficient bid. We'll be walking you through uh, the post tension optimization tools. Uh, how to generate bill of material and report generations and if you have to evaluate different construction methodologies then how to go about it. And then we'll be uh, summarizing what we learned today and who else is using my server. So let's start with the workflow for the request for proposal. So there is an entity called owner or the client and he puts out the project statement for preliminary design and then a company is selected to perform this preliminary design uh, whom we call as client engineer. And then the client engineer prepares a design build agreement which is phased out for uh, requesting for proposals and then the contractor cites these opportunities and creates a team uh, with different components in it. So he has a team that will have a fabricator, a, a, a environmental engineering uh, firm, geotech engineering, uh, design engineers. So he has a team with him, it's called a consortium. And from that consortium, he hands the uh, drawings, the drawing package to the design engineer whose main job is to cross-check the data that has been given uh, to him with the client's engineer and then once he has cross-checked all the information and if he, has, if he is making some kind of recommendation, then he has to frequently talk back and forth with the client's engineer. Now once he has done that, then his job is to verify uh, the criteria that are given is to verify and optimize the post tensioning and if a construction methodology is suggested then he has to verify that as well if not then he, uh, he is supposed to propose one. Now once uh, he has uh, done this activity he has to compile everything in bill of material and report which is then used by the contractor to get the pricing, the man hours and all the other expenditures uh, uh, plotted out and uh, compiled in a presentation or a report form. Now sometimes owner wants the contractor to come up and present uh, their uh, request for proposal and that they, they have different uh, proponents have to give in, uh, come in and give their own presentations. So request for proposal is basically a two-fold activity. One is technical, the other one is presentation. Now presentation is may not always be a PowerPoint presentation. It can be a well-documented report uh, with uh, conveying all the details or it can be uh, uh, an animation uh, of uh, the entire process that they are, they are simulating. So it's all about how strong uh, the technical checks have been made and how well it has been uh, proposed or put forward to the owner. And this is what we'll be covering today. So let's see why my receiver is needed. The uh, role of engineer that I just described can be laid down in this flowchart. So he starts by reviewing the drawing package, then he has to check the bridge type, layout, span, section which is being proposed by the uh, client's engineer, then he has to optimize the post tensioning, and then he has to make recommendations if any. And then he has to go and prepare the bill of material report and presentation. 
Now, uh, this is the workflow of another software uh, that will be uh, used by the engineer to fulfill uh, the following criteria or the following needs of his uh, flowchart activity. So you start by creating a geometry in another product, uh, then you apply tendons to it, then you set up construction stages. This is very important for post tension structure and uh, many of the products are not able to uh, take into account the construction staging. So we'll, uh, so provided you have a tool that can handle construction stages, so you will set up the construction stage analysis. Then uh, engineers apply the light loads and the other static loads, then uh, they perform the analysis and then they perform the design. Now if the design checks are not as per uh, the criteria, he has to go back and uh, redo the entire uh, process. So while creating geometry, he has to uh, use a different uh, cross section this time or if the cross section is fixed, uh, he can alter the span lengths. If not, then uh, he has to come and modify uh, the tendons. Uh, and in tendons, he has to modify the cross section area, the stresses, or uh, uh, sorry, the forces in order to get uh, a good and efficient design. So as you can clearly see that this process would require several iterations. This process would be time consuming if we have to uh, perform a uh, check for multiple construction methodology. This process would also need extra effort from the engineers to prepare bill of material and report because that are not taken care by uh, the current uh, tool that we are looking at. So, this is how Myra Civil kicks in. Myra Civil will provide you uh, with tools that will walk you through the entire uh, flowchart for your work requirement. Hence, making the process more efficient. So, you can start by generating the model to a wizard, which will uh, take care of your tendon layout, construction staging, and uh, loading. All you need to do is apply the live loads and then perform the analysis and design check. While uh, performing, uh, before performing the code design check, you need to first check whether the, excuse me, I'm getting some uh, feedback on uh, the sound, let me quickly check that. Is the audio clear now? I I just switched to a different headset. Is it better now? Great. Thank you. Actually, there was uh, some technical glitch here with the headset that, uh, that I was using. So I switched to a new one or a different one and therefore it's uh, performing better. All right. So continuing from where we left. Uh, so instead of going and performing the analysis and then design and then modifying your uh, 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 layout and tendon profile, what you can do in Midas is that you can just perform the analysis and check the tendon yielding criteria. You can see the deflections and uh, stress values and then modify the tendon uh, property very easily. And then once you have uh, uh, 
got an optimal uh, solution you can then go ahead and perform the design checks and constructability checks uh, to uh, seal your uh, uh, iterations so as you can see you need not go all the way back to redo everything but you can just take care uh, of the entire iterations by quickly modifying uh, the tenant property and uh, uh, you can then perform the design checks and constructability checks and then you can generate the bill of material with a and a high quality report so you can see the entire work process has been supported by one tool so having done this let's quickly move on to a hypothetical problem that I've uh, taken here today so let's see how Midas will actually be uh, doing this job for you so this is an example of a three span post tension box girder and you can see the uh, design build details are given as follows so it's a straight bridge it's uh, the total length is 540 feet three span each span is 180 feet the width is 33.6 feet there are two lanes construction methodology has been proposed by the client so let's say it's movable scaffolding system uh, which is the most common practice then uh, you have uh, the material properties as uh, grade uh, 6000 psi then we have the steel as a 70 so, um, uh, low relaxation strands and then the applied codes are as per PSC design check as per H2 LRFT creep and shrinkage to be used as uh, CBFIP 1990 the section details are given as here so what uh, we'll be doing is let me go back into the program itself and quickly start modeling so this is the new look of my receivable 2013 version I'll start with a new page and this is the works tab which is the backbone of this uh, software many of our users that have uh, joined in today will already be familiar with the, uh, this workflow so what I'll be doing is start with a structure wizard that will be MMS bridge MSS bridge wizard so movable scale folding system and uh, here I'll be defining the bridge layout so I'll start with uh, defining the material property and uh, make sure the unit systems that you are working in is consistent so I'm working in kips and inch as you can see here at any point of time uh, in the modeling process you can switch the unit system to the one that you are currently interested in so I'll start by defining the material click add here and then just select concrete standard as ASTM reinforced concrete and the grade of concrete as uh, C6000 PSI and then hit apply now I'll use the uh, define a tendon material ASTM standard and then I'll use a416270 low relaxation strands and then hit OK so you have the tendon uh, property and concrete defined um, then I'll enter the span length so it will be three spans at 180 feet now the units are inch so I'll just multiply this value by 12 and the program will take care of it and I have to specify where the fixed support should be so let's say it's at the first pier it's, uh, it has a fixed support number of uh, segments per span being 20 uh, coal joint being at 0.2 of uh, the uh, uh, L2 that's the second span length and you can easily see all these uh, uh, variables that you have to or the parameters that you have to enter are given uh, are taken from the uh, diagram above so I'll just enter the end crate length S4 as you can see let's say it's 12 feet or 144 inches and the diaphragm width is 144 on either side of the support and then the stage duration for each stage let's say we give 20 days uh, for, uh, for uh, the entire stage out of which 15 days is putting up the form work and everything lay out, laying out the ducts and all and then uh, uh, pouring of the concrete and then we'll give uh, five days for curing of the concrete before we move on to the next span 
and then uh, we can also include the scaffolding reaction because it's movable and include the weight of wet concrete for the subsequent stages. Then uh, you move on to the section tab and you can easily define here uh, based on the section details for your center joint and the diaphragm sections. And then you can switch to the tendon tab where the program proposes different type of tendon layout arrangements. So this is the one that, uh, that you can see right here. You can see how many uh, number of strands you want or layers you want in each web. And uh, you can very easily define the tendon profile uh, in terms of multiplying factors of the length. So you can see uh, them here. Now we'll define the tendon properties. Now this is the interesting part because I go and uh, define multiple tendon properties as I don't know which will be the best one for my job. So I'll select uh, internal post tension, the material and the total tendon area. So I'll start with a uh, 0.5 inch strand. That's a 19 in number to make one tendon. So I'll get the nominal area. I'll enter the duct area right here, select the reflect, uh, relaxation coefficient since it is low relaxation, uh, relaxation strand. So I'll select uh, enter 2.5% and then they are all bonded uh, tendons. After this I'll hit apply. The moment I do that you can see the works tab is updated and then I'll change the name to let's say web2. So what I'll do is define um, like four different tendon properties and show you how to optimize uh, uh, your uh, post tensioning. So I'll have now 0.6 uh, inch uh, diameter with 19 in number and the The duct diameter is 2.62. Why? Then I'll use, uh, I'll change the name to, let's say, 3. And this, 21 uh, strands of 0.5 inch. Duct diameter, why? And then let's say the last one is, uh, W4 with uh, 0.6 inch strands, 21 in number and the duct diameter has 2.75 inches. And then I'll hit OK. So we have defined four tendon properties here and I'll start the entire uh, bridge or, or all the tendons to have uh, web 1 property and uh, I have the jegging stress as 0.7 times the ultimate uh, strength of the uh, steel material that we have used. So if you recall the ultimate strength and the yield strengths are specified here, the friction factors, wobble friction factors and the slips at the beginning and at the end are specified here and whether the tendon is bonded or unbonded are specified here. Here, so 0.7 times of the SU means the ultimate strength is the starting uh, jacking value, and then the tendon scale can uh, can be laid out in different planes. So we'll have uh, two planes in the web for post tensioning it, and then you can always save this uh, uh, wizard file for your future references. So you can just hit save as, and then you can save uh, the wizard file with different names and options that you want so that every time you are trying to uh, uh, create a similar project you can just open this up modify the parameters and you're good to go so once I hit OK you can see the bridge is created right here and uh, in the works tab you can see all the supports have been defined so I, I'll just display the supports I'll uh, display all the tenant uh, profiles here So you can see the tendon profiles, the top view, the side view, and uh, I can go to the front view, and I can make uh, uh, image files from here. So I can right click, say let this be my uh, tendon layout image, let this be let me undisplay the tendons for now. This, let's let this be the uh, image for 
bridge layout and I can cycle through the construction stages here so this is CS1 um, what I'll do is fix the view and scale it down and also I can display the point loads that are there I can go to load display nodal loads so you can see this load is applied here as uh, the next construction stage the wet concrete will be poured and it will be supported by the movable scaffolding system at this point so this particular segment will get extra force here that has been uh, taken into account so you can save this as also as an image and then you can change the construction stage and then proceed so now the uh, scaffolding has moved from this location to the next one and the last stage um, is uh, a null stage for now so what we will do is assign uh, the duration to this last stage as 10,000 days to see the permanent effect of uh, creep and shrinkage to it. So let's start by defining the time dependent material property. So I'll go to properties, define a creep and shrinkage curve, I'll click add, um, quickly enter this is C6000 characteristic compressor strength is 6KSI the notation size for now let's say 12 show result you can see the graph for creep coefficients you can save that as a creep coefficient graph for your report you can see shrinkage strain graph you can click here you can save that for your report and then hit close here and OK here and close then we can define the compressor strength gain curve click add C6000 CBFIP as the code here you have to enter the uh, mean compressive strength of the concrete not the characteristic compressive strength so it, which is 6 plus 1.16 in minus you can enter the uh, numbers and uh, uh, operations anywhere in the program will take care of that so if I hit redraw graph you can see the value is about uh, more than 7 which is 7.16 uh, I can create this also for the report graph and then hit OK and close so I have uh, defined the material and now since the uh, cross section area I have not calculated I let the program do it so that I can get uh, the notational size for my cross section to assess the time dependent effect I'll hit select all to select in the entire structure and then hit apply so this has been done now I'll hit uh, go to the material link and associate the time dependent property that I selected or defined with uh, for creep and shrinkage and compressive strength with the kind of material that I'm using and then hit add once we have defined this I'll hit close and the time dependent material properties are set now I'll quickly define some superimposed dead loads because uh, we need uh, live loads and dead loads for optimizing the tendon uh, uh, post tensioning so I'll go to static load cases, enter a name, let's say superimpose dead loads, type being construction stage loads, hit add, close it, and uh, now you can just click on element loads, and I can, uh, a new feature in Myra, so let me just close this and highlight it here. You can right click and select tree menu 2, so you can have two tree menus, and you can uh, activate the works in both uh, places now if I hit element tab you can see the elements uh, the element uh, beam load has been shown here and I can use uh, this works tab to make the selection and then I can uh, select the load uh, case name and a group name to assign it onto the structure and the value should be 0.5 kips per foot so I'll change the unit and adjust the scale accordingly 
so the program updates it automatically for you and then hit apply so you can see the loading onto the structure now I will close this and uh, I would add this load in the last construction stage so which is of 10,000 days to see the permanent behavior so I will add uh, the superimposed dead load on the first day of the last construction stage this is done and now we will define the live loads onto the structure let me go to the initial view and I don't need this table uh, tree uh, anymore so I've closed it go to the top view so that you can see the uh, definition of live loads easily uh, now you can just go to loads go to moving load select the code here select the line lanes click add let's say lane 1 the eccentricity is, is the 6 feet from the center line all I need to do is just click here and then click all the way to the end and here I can specify where my span starts so I'll just check on those uh, element numbers and then hit apply then I'll define another lane, lane 2 since there were two lanes on the structure, minus 6 is the eccentricity. Let me clean this table here and then click and then click on the last node. The program will create the lanes and I'll just select uh, the segments where these, uh, the span starts. And then hit OK. So in this way, two lanes have been defined now and next uh, uh, thing is we define the standard vehicle so I'll start with H2 LRFD standard vehicles with a dynamic load allowance let's say 33 percent for truck and then I'll use a tandem and then hit OK so I'll define two vehicles if you're using any other uh, uh, vehicle or any other DOT vehicle you can define user defined uh, uh, truck train load or permit loads and we also have uh, train loads built into the software uh, just for your information. Now I'll go ahead and define the moving load cases. I'll enter the name as moving vehicle load and then hit add. So the tandem uh, vehicle will run on zero lanes, then one lane, then second lane, then one and two combined. And then we'll get a set of results and then we'll repeat this for the truck vehicle and then the program will see uh, out of these two cases whichever is the uh, critical one and create come up with the envelope at the end so we have defined the moving load cases and now we'll be defining the negative moment lane support so I'll select the girder bridge now this is the uh, uh, this is the step we have we are doing to optimize the vehicle position onto the truck uh, onto the structure because the program suggests that our truck should be placed in the either span um, and the minimum distance should be 50 feet so in order to incorporate those clauses uh, we have to do this step then I'll just define the lane reaction for this I need to know where my supports are located so I'll just go to the second tree menu here and right click display the supports let me unselect everything and just click on the next one which is so I have to specify where the support look interior support locations are and I'll use single select to select those locations there are two right there and then hit apply that's it and click close so having done this uh, our live load definition is completed and we are good to perform the analysis so I'll go to analysis, set the moving load uh, analysis control, set the construction stage analysis control where you can consider the time dependent effects, you can consider the initial tangent uh, displacement for erected structures and then hit OK. Now you are good to perform the analysis so I'll go ahead let me close this one and perform the analysis. So while performing the analysis let me save this uh, model file as let's say P. and 
you can see the status bar is here it will show you what analysis is being performed and what's the progress so you can assess how much uh, time it, it will take and the time will be reported at the end of the table so this is the analysis that we have done with uh, tenant property one and we'll quickly see the results with that so the analysis is almost at the verge of completion now So this was the uh, analysis that we done using uh, the tenant property as web1. So what we'll do now is uh, see the results uh, for the deflection and many uh, moment diagrams. So let me just go to side view. Let me just select. Oh, let's first define the um, load cases real quick or load combinations so I'll go to concrete and then select uh, H2LRFT 2012 version and uh, hit OK here so based on the uh, load definition the program has defined the strength and serviceability load combinations and uh, for serviceability we just need to monitor the primary effects so I'll quickly modify them for the primary effects So you can uh, customize the load combinations in no time. So having defined this, I'm ready to see the results. So I'll right click go to deformations and displacement contours or the same can be accessed through our result tab at the top. So once we have uh, reached here uh, let me first see the results for our construction stage analysis and uh, let me quickly undisplay the supports here So this is the combined results. So I'll start with the uh, stage one and we'll check on the deformation and displacement. And let me switch to the inch. So this is the deflection that you are looking at. Let me just clear here. All right. So this is the first stage. You can see the deformation is about uh, 2.05 at the very first stage when we are just placing it and pouring the concrete. But once it matures, you can see the deflection is increased. It's about 2.36 here. And then you can go ahead and change the construction stage to second, third. And just to give you a better idea, uh, this is uh, the camber values also. So I can just control the skill factor of the deformation so that it becomes more realistic. So coming all the way to the end and the final step. This is the deflection uh, diagram that you are getting. And here you can see the uh, maximum deflection that is occurring and uh, the deflection that is there. Now. If uh, we, were, we did not do the construction stage analysis and we have just directly come to the post uh, uh, CS, uh, that is the post construction stage analysis, then we would have uh, got something like this, which is pretty much uh, regular, but the values are different from uh, what uh, you uh, expect. And also, if you see the bending moment uh, diagrams, they are 
affected by the construction methodologies. So if I go to beam diagrams, let's go to say maximum bending moment without deformation. So you see such a symmetric uh, bending moment distribution is uh, observed and uh, most of the time uh, what uh, we misjudge is uh, we, when we are doing the analysis we uh, model the bridge in one uh, shot with the supports and just load and get uh, the bending moment values and then design for this value. Whereas if you see uh, the true picture is uh, different. So if I go to the fourth construction stage and the last step you see the, uh, the bending moment is lot, uh, distribution is a lot more different in the first pan and the last pan. The reason being the first pan was very much simply uh, supported when it was projected. And so this is uh, the result that you can appreciate only through a construction stage analysis. And now we'll quickly uh, focus on our deformation values for different runs. So uh, the, this is the uh, this is the set of results that we obtained from our uh, when we are using the post tension uh, as uh, web pro web one, which is uh, uh, 19 stands of 0.5 inch diameter. The total tendon area was uh, 2.9 uh, square inch and we have to check for the serviceability limit in order to get uh, uh, to the accurate uh, or the exact result. So we are looking at serviceability results uh, for load combination 5. I'll check on the deformed and this is the deformed shape. You are getting a maximum deformation of 3.7 uh, um, inches. Now. Uh, what I can do instead of proceeding with the, uh, uh, the design checks, I can easily go in and check uh, certain things here. So first I can go and check the tendon losses for the end. Then I can also check tendon stress limits. I can specify the tendon stress limits at different uh, locations. These are the uh, preset values to see if the uh, tendons are yielding or not. And then, uh, but since the deformation is uh, beyond my uh, allowable limits, so what I can do is quickly go ahead and uh, modify the tendon property. So if I uh, come to the pre-processing mode, I can go to the load tab, select Precess loads and tenant profile here and then click change property and since uh, uh, I want to evaluate different properties I can just select and add them and just modify the property to property 2 hit OK and we are good to uh, verify the results again. So to cut short this uh, uh, the, uh, the time for now what I'll do is quickly open the results from from the second run and the time taken for this uh, run was about uh, 280 seconds so it's less than uh, 5 minutes and uh, let's see the results with ten property 2 defined here so you can verify which tenant property has been applied and uh, for this displacement contours we use we'll see the deformed shapes right here. And let me set the scale as 0.5. So now you see uh, the deformation for uh, the load combination 5 has come down to 2.5 uh, inches. So in this manner we can uh, uh, quickly assess uh, that uh, our post tensioning has, is working. We are uh, able to control the deflection here and uh, you can also see the weight of the uh, tendon that you are saving through this process.
we can go to tools or results itself and tenant and then you have tenant weight where you can just go to the tenant property and see the total tenant weight so when we were using ten uh, web property one the we were having 60 uh, the total weight was 67.3 kips and uh, this one is uh, tenant property two which is 94.5 kips and uh, let me bring up the results from uh, the third run for the fifth case here form region let me set the scale right and then hit probably some good visualization here and here you see when I used uh, web3 the, uh, the uh, deformation went high because the total in area and the weight would be uh, less so if I go back to uh, the result tab and uh, select the tendon weight so you can see the uh, weight is uh, reduced and uh, so is the total force and therefore uh, the deflection is high and uh, so with the tendon property hit 3 we were getting this deflection now let me quickly show you the last tendon property results and then I'll show you how we can optimize and reach something that is uh, workable for us so this is the fourth tendon uh, property and you can easily comment that okay yeah if you increase the tendon, uh, uh, tendon area force will increase the deflection will decrease and uh, you will have to have more steel in it so it's a very common uh, uh, judgment and anyone can make it but uh, now the question is out of all the different tendon properties how we can quickly optimize uh, to find which one should be the best combination shall we have uh, all the tendons uh, do we need uh, same uh, tendon size throughout or we can play around with them so the answer is we can play around with them and let me first uh, show you the results for the, uh, the same load combination here and you can see the value has sharply decreased with the, um, the tenant property 4 which is 2.27 now so uh, you can see uh, with increasing tenant area the reflection is decreasing but now the question is uh, to optimize it so what I'll do in the same model I know that my uh, first pan is showing the major deflection and that is my concern so I'll just uh, uh, increase uh, the tendon area size in the first pan and then uh, use a lower or less uh, amount of steel in the remaining span so I can either modify this particular uh, model file or I can open the one which has a lesser tendon value and then quickly modify it so let me just stick to this one and I'll go to tendon pieces tendon profile and I leave the first uh, segment tendons as it is but change all the others to a lower tendon uh, property let's say I'll select tendon web 2 click OK and yes and close so basically we have uh, now we have a combination of uh, two tendons uh, two tendon properties uh, we have type 2 and type 4 and now if we run the analysis and extract the results you will be able to see the difference since we are just interested in looking at the results let me quickly uh, find the file the root and properties in there so 
to stop this execution for now and open a new uh, file with the optimization done so you can cross check quickly that I have used two tenant uh, profiles type 2 and type 4 and the results are as shown here so go to result tab I go to displacement contour I have combination as 5 formation legend five click OK here so now I'm getting uh, the displacement as <coughs> excuse me let me change it to inches here as 2.7 inch so from uh, we started with the uh, 3.75 and we came down to 2.7 so we were able to reduce the reflection by almost one inch and uh, uh, being able to optimize the tendon uh, pieces. Now this is a hypothetical uh, problem that we investigated today but it can uh, the idea behind this is that you can easily uh, modify your tendon pieces and compare for yourself and um, now the best part is the report generation so for this what I'll do is um, go to tools and we'll have a dynamic report uh, generator where I can easily open an existing template or create a new one so I'll say open and uh, this is the final one that I'll be showing you let me open a template one it's lying somewhere on my desktop so you can create this kind of uh, template and the program will open Midas, uh, inside Midas here it will open a Microsoft Word page so you can see you can enter the company name as a header you can enter the uh, uh, the project name the client or the consortium name for which you are working and then at the bottom you can enter your engineer name the number of page and now all you need to do <coughs> excuse me go to the report tab and uh, let me see if uh, we, we can quickly create uh, some images for our bridge project. So like I was uh, doing in the beginning, that this is my bridge. So uh, let me display uh, the supports here to get the bridge layout. And I'll right click and go to dynamic report image bridge layout click ok then I can just uh, display all the tendon profiles here and go to the side view right click tendon layout then you can uh, prepare bill of material and keep it ready and handy so for that you can go to tools sorry bill of material click on bill of material i'll just uh, create of type 1 here okay program generates this kind of uh, report with the bill of material showing you what kind of sections that have been used what material properties are there and uh, what uh, kind of uh, and what is the total area of the concrete and if it was uh, if you need to paint the surface what is the inner and the outer paint area that's also given uh, in this bill of material so I can easily uh, bring this bill of material into the report by either create, creating an image and you can go to the report tab here and paste it at, uh, at the point that you want to insert it. So let's start by quickly dropping um, and getting shape, giving shape to our uh, report. So let's say I want to have first a bridge layout. So 
let's just drag and drop it over the screen. Then let's say I want to have my section uh, data. So I will go and have uh, the section summary tables. So this intersection, the program creates this kind of uh, section table. Then the other section, the joint section. So there are three different types of sections if you remember very fine. And then we have the diaphragm section. We have defined here. And after this, we can insert that bill of DO file here. So you can have the section and the bill of material right there for the sections. And then I can define the tenant property. So for this, uh, let me pick the tenant layout. So you can see the tenant layout there. And after that, you can um, let's go to result, tables, tenant weight for, let's say, by property. So now we have two tenant properties, two and four. So program says that, okay, for type 2 tendon you have to use uh, total this weight for type 4 you have to use this weight now you can right click say dynamic report uh, table and then hit OK here then go back to report editor and you can see the table is created right here and then you can just drag and drop it onto the screen you want to have it's just like what you can format it by spacing them this is the work material for tendons and now based on your total concrete and tenant area you can enter the reinforcement as like 4% or 2% uh, wherever required. So, uh, we'll, uh, so with little uh, more information and what I've done is generated this uh, report and I'll uh, share it with you real quick here. So you can have something like this where you can show the uh, bridge layout, the section information that you have used, the bill of material, then the tenant layout and the tenant placement. And then you can also uh, show the construction stage. So CS1 stage, CS2 stage, I mean first stage, second stage, third stage with the load applied. So this way you can sp uh, specify what construction methodology you are using. And uh, you can also go in and uh, and all the results that you have used for. Now, once we have uh, uh, satisfied with the, uh, this uh, pre-stressing, we can quickly all, uh, do the design check. So I'll go to PSC tab and uh, perform the design check here already. All you need to do is just select the code, the parameter, uh, so you can select between low relaxation strands, uh, and uh, what kind of corrosion conditions are there, what is the flexure strength uh, checks as per core or strain compatibility, the construction edge type can be segmental or non-segmental, so you can uh, check these criteria and what you want to see in the output. Then you can define the uh, material itself, so along with the material you can assign all the rebar uh, information, and then uh, you can uh, go ahead and perform the uh, analysis and I'll not go uh, much into the uh, report generated because that is a topic we will cover up in our coming up webinars but I'll quickly show you uh, one interesting feature called PSC result diagrams so based on all the load combinations that are there if I want to check uh, whether my sections are safe or not as per uh, bending moment about major axis for maximum minimum This is one, let's say, solid fill. And hit apply. The program will show me that this is the envelope that you see as green lines is the overall safety criteria. And uh, the bending moment values are shown in the envelope form right underneath it. So this, uh, this is a quick and crude check that, okay, my cross sections are largely uh, 
sufficient to handle this kind of uh, stress and the post tension values and then you can also put this let me just uh, and display the tendon profiles for now and put that also in the report then I can just right click dynamic report image pre-stress design diagram, diagram okay go back to the report and the report editor I'll see another uh, diagram created here and I can just go and drag and drop it in this as simple as that. So in this manner you can go ahead and uh, modify your uh, or do the optimization of your post engineering. Now the last part was uh, how to uh, evaluate different uh, uh, construction methodologies. So what I'll do is open a fresh program right here other things because I'm working on the network so I don't want my system to slow down all right so I briefly shared with you my work schedule for the day <laughs> So, uh, uh, coming back uh, to the program, I will use open a new file. Now with the same uh, uh, profile and same input, let's quickly create some other type of structure with different construction methodology. So let's start with the uh, uh, fully showed method of construction, which is very common. I can go in and uh, just like uh, the previous time, I can define the material. Define the concrete, uh, the steel for the tin. And then uh, go ahead and enter uh, the variables like 3 at 180 times 12 parameters if I want to enter in inches, where I want to have the fixed support, and uh, what should be the uh, anchorage, where the tendon should be anchored and what should be the diaphragm thickness. All this thing can be entered here. Then I can define the tendon property. I can stick with that web one tendon that I defined or uh, this time I can have two and one combined. So you can define the tendon properties right here. Let's say this is thin. I'm just uh, showing you, uh, it to you uh, as how you can define um, uh, another construction methodology, but you can go and define the tendon properties which you have already finalized with that, uh, met, uh, with that for that construction methodology, and then you can compare the results. So once you have uh, entered these uh, parameters, you are all set to hit uh, 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 OK and generate the bridge, or if you want, you can uh, save this and then open the one that you are working on and generate the bridge. Let me do that later. Let me just quickly show it to you. And likewise, I was also oh, sorry. And uh, in this manner, you can create exactly the same bridge but with a different construction methodology and the difference uh, comes in the wet concrete weight. Uh, if you recall the earlier uh, we had a wet concrete weight coming at a particular location because of the movable scaffolding system but since now the construction is fully uh, showed from bottom you, will, you have a fully supported system so there is no need of uh, extra reactions on the adjacent members and uh, let me display the supports right here. So this is the final arrangement of the supports. First stage, second stage, and third stage. Um, and then you can have the fourth stage and you can add the loads in the same manner. So in this manner once the models are uh, set up quickly you can just uh, 
in a matter of minutes you can modify the tendon uh, uh, forces and come up with a, a good result. Now in the same uh, uh, model if I want to have if I want to have a balance cantilever approach so I can go with balance cantilever wizard I can enter and punch in the numbers as per uh, the same layout I want and I can define in this peer section also so I can go with the solid rectangle here peer section quickly enter the dimensions as let's say 72 inches by 18 feet let's say and then hit OK here close and it's a three span so I'll enter a number of peers as two uh, stage duration like previous but this will have different stage duration because it's a different construction methodology you can choose cast in place you can choose precast me method you can enter the section dimensions and the tenant layout but for now I'll just stick with the same tenant uh, property just for the purpose of demo here and then I can hit OK to generate the bridge. So you can see uh, the bridge uh, is generated with the same uh, profile that is straight uh, with the section that have been defined but we have done the tapering because of the construction methodology so this will affect my uh, uh, bill of material and uh, give me the new numbers for uh, uh, my concrete uh, area and my rebar area. Now uh, construction methodology selection also depends upon a lot of uh, on the labor uh, cost and the time invested and uh, the nature of uh, site and the usage of the underbridge area. So depending upon those factors the client usually recommends or put forwards a particular type of uh, construction methodology and until unless there is some significant uh, saving or uh, uh, some another specific uh, requirement uh, the construction methodology uh, mainly remains more or less the same so uh, actually the engineers have to work in uh, within very tight brackets in order to come with an optimal uh, uh, bill of material and therefore uh, since concrete and steel the cost of uh, steel is much higher than concrete so it is only the uh, post tensioning that uh, they can really control and come up with a uh, uh, with a better or a winning uh, combination of uh, uh, bill of material and the presentation. So uh, also if you want uh, to have the same bridge with another profile let's say curved bridge so I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly open for FSM I have an example ready here let me open that for you Right here, so I have this uh, example of FSM ready with me. I'll just open it. Everything is defined. I've entered uh, the radius of uh, curvature for this curved bridge to be about uh, 7,800 feet. And I'll hit OK here. And it's a very mild curve, so it can be sustained through a fully shoot method of construction easily. And if you go to the top view, you can see the curvature. So in this manner, uh, the key is how quickly you can simulate uh, the model because it's not a very detailed design. So all you need to do is uh, come up with something uh, quick to assess uh, the behavior. And uh, if it's if you don't do the construction stage analysis, you will lose out on uh, uh, tendon losses. You will lose out on uh, uh, certain uh, the force and the deflections in the structure, like I showed in the presentation earlier. So let's. Uh, go back to the presentation
and let's see what we learned today. So I'm just summarizing all the things that we discussed. So the principal object objective of design engineer is to prepare an optimal bill of material. And with uh, bill of material, um, you can directly affect your bid. And since steel is more expensive than concrete, the uh, post engineering optimization is the only key in this process. And using uh, my receiver, engineers can cut short the iteration process to find an appropriate post engine. And uh, you can also compare different construction methodologies in uh, lesser time, as I uh, quickly showed to you. And high quality reports can be generated uh, as uh, in, in the format that the client wants. So if the client has shared with you some kind of uh, uh, layout or format, then you can easily extract them. So this was uh, what we learned today. And let us quickly see what other companies are doing uh, with uh, Midas in the field of uh, post engine structures. So you can see a couple of projects that I've shared here. Uh, the ones done in Florida, Canada, Nevada, East Coast, West Coast for post engineering jobs. And this is the partial list of our existing users that are currently using MyRecivo for doing their majority of um, the bridge related work. So uh, once again, thank you for attending the session today. Uh, like I mentioned, it is uh, it was the first webinar of the series. We have two more webinars to come up. Uh, the webinars are uh, are based on the uh, same line of post engine box girder and different phases of the project. So we, today we covered the request for proposal stage, what uh, elements of MyRecivo can really help you out and uh, update the process. And uh, then uh, the part two will be talking about how to uh, optimize the detailed design using a common platform so that we are not jumping on different platform for doing different things you do uh, like uh, for uh, doing the uh, superstructure you need one set of uh, uh, design tool then doing the uh, peer modeling you need another set of tool then for your substructure you need another set of tool for seismic you need third set of tool so right now you are using five different uh, products to accomplish one thing so what you will be losing out if you're using such kind of uh, approach we'll be talking about that and then we'll be summarizing as how everything can be wrapped up in the same project at the same time so do join us uh, for the session it will be done it will be conducted on september 20th at 3 p.m eastern standard time and the third part is uh, rather more interesting one it is about load rating and load rating sometimes uh, could be very critical um, for different components of your bridge, you need different type of models. Sometimes you are uh, good with spine model. Sometimes you have to use a uh, grillage model for rating different uh, components. So we'll be talking about uh, uh, when to use what kind of uh, model uh, for different uh, 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 component ratings. We'll also be talking about how you can cut short the uh, repetitive process of finding the tonnage uh, using spreadsheet. So all this will be discussed in the last uh, uh, webinar of the series that will be done on September 26th, 2012 at 3 p.m. EST. That's a Wednesday. So do join us then. And for both of these webinars, we'll be using the latest ASHTO codes that are uh, out uh, early this year. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please feel free to share with me. The presenter of the day was Arun Sharma and my phone number is 646-852-9292 and you can also send me emails um, for your questions at asharma at midasuser.com Once again, thanks for joining in today. This is Arun Sharma signing off from Midasoft. Have a great day ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye.